Hello YouTube, um, Dan Kovacs here. I'm uh, going to do a quick little review of this uh, cartridge that I bought at uh, World of Commodore in 2009. Um, basically what it is is an Ethernet cartridge for the uh, Commodore 64 computer. Um, and uh, right now it's got its case on. I'm going to pull its case off and uh, just give you a little uh, uh, demonstration of what it is or a little show of what it is here. I'll take this off and uh, basically what you have here is a, a fully functional Ethernet cartridge uh, that's designed to work with uh, Commodore 64 or Commodore 128 computers. Um, it's a 10 base T cartridge uh, or 10 base T Ethernet uh, controller. Um, you'll never see 10 meg transfers on a, on a Commodore but I mean um, it's, it's plenty fast. Um, and uh, there's just a couple of things on it here. Uh, you have the two LEDs you see on the right side there, the green and the red, those are uh, link and activity. You, you get the link lights on the Ethernet port itself. Um, there is a reset button. So, uh, you know, if you're using this on a 64, this gives you the functionality of being able to reset the computer by pushing a button instead of having to shut it off and on. These four switches control various things. Uh, what The first switch at the top is for what mode it operates in. Um, I really have never done anything with these. The second switch is uh, uh, whether or not it boots from uh, a ROM or not. Um, obviously on this one it's set to not. It doesn't really indicate that on there, but uh, there's one for being able to switch ROMs. I'm not sure what the other two switches do. Um, for most intents and purposes you, you want to leave all the switches up. Um, the slot, uh, you see a, a, an empty ROM socket here. Um, you can use an EPROM burner to burn a ROM image onto it and have the computer auto boot to it. Um, there is one out there that makes use of this cartridge uh, called the uh, Kipper Term. Uh, it has an FTP, not an FTP, sorry, uh, uh, Telnet client, uh, TFTP, stuff like that. Um, you can ping an IP address. Uh, lovely little things like that. Um, there's some dip switches which affect uh, where the cartridge sits in memory. Best to leave it the way it is. So I'm going to reassemble this and take it and plug it in and show you what it can do. So this is what I use for my 8-bit stuff. It's a Commodore 128 flat version. Um, nothing really special about it except that I have uh, installed Jiffy DOS ROMs in into this computer so disk access time is uh, significantly faster than what you would see on a stock Commodore computer and uh, the other thing that I'm using and I'll probably be doing a quick review of this some other time is uh, I have one of Jim Brain's micro IEC card, or, uh, cards here and, and basically what that is is uh, instead of using a disk drive a big clunky disk drive like one of these you use uh, SD cards and uh, you can just take the SD card plug it into a PC they're FAT32 formatted and uh, have all of your software for your Commodore on a single card um, and with Jiffy DOS access times are incredibly fast with this thing it just plugs into the di uh, disk drive port of the IEC port of the Commodore and then there's this white wire here which runs to a little uh, plug that connects to the cassette port to draw 5 volts to power the unit. Um, I have powered this that thing up without the connector on and for some reason the lights come on. I don't know if the device works or not so it must be drawing power from somewhere. So we'll take the cartridge, pardon the messy desk here, and uh, we'll plug it in to the back of the computer. It just fits into the cartridge slot. Too much stuff back here. You just push it in like you would a, any game cartridge. Okay, and then you take your uh, Ethernet cable, which uh, connects to my router. Now, this is the important thing there are no applications that I know of that support PPPoE. So, if you're using an internet provider that does not provide a DHCP address, you're going to need to get yourself a router. And we just power it up. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is um, 
Breadbox 64. Uh, to switch over to 64 mode here. Breadbox is a Twitter client. <laughs> Believe it or not, they have one for this system. So, um, we have to CD into the disk image. And then just run the first program on the image. So it's going to ask you for your username and password. Now this program comes pre-configured to use DHCP and has uh, the IP address is set up in a way that's compatible with my uh, Netgear router. So I didn't need to do anything special with this to get it to work. Um, I'm just going to set this down for a second and type in my login information. Okay, so now we have the Twitter client connecting and uh, it's going to uh, go and pull in all of my updates for my uh, Twitter account. Most of the stuff is the things that I posted. I had a few beers last night and came home and posted uh, some stuff on there, but you can see Classic Game Room has some tweets on there. And uh, Now, what I've done is I've got my PC sitting right next to me here, so um, we'll just swing over to this here, and you'll see my updates appear here. So if I go and type something in here, like filming, typing with one finger when I'm not right in front of the keyboard. And then uh, we'll see shortly that update appear on the Commodore 64. Now I'm just going to pause this. But the way, the way this program works actually is um, it just is a text only read of the uh, page and decodes the text and shows it up there. Now you can post content to it, um, but you can't do stuff like add friends or anything like that. It's just a very basic program, but it's kind of neat proof of concept of what can be done uh, with an 8-bit computer. And, and what would be kind of cool is if uh, they would be able to put this onto the ROM socket. So you boot your computer up, then turn it on, and right away up comes your Twitter client. Um, that would be pretty cool. Anyways, it's going to update in about 30 seconds here, so uh, I'm and just going to pause we go. it. It is going to go and uh, fetch a page from Twitter, and you should see my update that I posted for my PC on here. There it is, filming. <laughs> so, I'll show you how you can just post something on here. Um, I'm going to write filming a video.